Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Man's Noble Beer Views. Today I have another beer from Divine Barrel Brewing Company out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, this is actually a collaboration between them and Kushwa Brewing Company, um, which I should have looked up before I did this video, but unfortunately I did not. I've actually never heard of them before I had anything from them. Um, but anyways, this is another West Coast style IPA from these guys, which they're, uh, that's probably what they're best at in my opinion. Well, I know they're really good at that. They're also very good at, uh, the whole like desserty kettle sour thing, but just because that's not my favorite style, I don't really think about that too much. So it's not my fav it's not my favorite thing to do, but that might be the best thing that they do based on other people's opinions. But I love their West Coast stuff. They're definitely the best brewery in Charlotte making them, um, but they're some of the better stuff in general. Some of the they're one of the better breweries um, that I've had consistently recently that are doing them. But this is a double IPA with Mosaic, Citra, El Dorado, and Amarillo, um, and it is nine point two ABV, so it's pretty big. Um, I'm going to crack it open and see what we got. And the one thing I, I like about these guys, I mean, I love Midwestern IPAs like uh, um, White Raja and uh, like this, everything from Fatheads. But those are, you know, they, they are very bright, hot forward, but they do have a, like at least a little bit of a malt, like caramel malt car character. Maybe it's not even that much in the flavor. You, see, you can see it. It's usually orangey color. These guys, most of the West Coast stuff they do, they're very, very light in color. I mean, they almost look like a Pilsner, but they're somehow not overly bitter um, or, you know, have... They're not over over the top in any. They're not overly bitter. They're not like syrupy or anything like that. But they're very. So this one's like slightly darker, but it's still pretty light um, for a big massive uh, IPA. Um, I would say it's a standard golden color with a fluffy white head. A lot of times though, at least the Midwestern ones are usually a little darker than this. Oh, that smells really good um, and super clean too. Uh, so that's the other thing I like about these guys. They're, they're, they are able to make these very clean IPA, like clean looking IPAs, but they're, other than the, the mouthfeel is like a traditional West Coast too, but the flavor profile is actually more New England style because they're very low bitterness, um, very just hot flavor forward. Um, this one's a lot of pineapple. Uh, there's a little bit of dankness. There's also something that I'm picking up that's like slightly coconut, but you know, th there's no Sabro in this, so I don't know. And I'm not too familiar with El Dorado. I've had a ton of beers with it in it, but I don't know that I've had too many El Dorado single hop beers to say that I know what it tastes like individually. Um, mosaic and Citra, of course. I mean, the pineapple is definitely a mosaic thing. Um, I mean, it is a little like orangey citrusy too. Uh, what I don't get is that like slightly medicinal like pill aspirin-y flavor that, or aroma that I usually get from Amarillo. So I'm guessing that's uh, you know probably kept in check on this one. So it's so funny how I was saying that like all a lot of their IPAs were were like light, like very light, like Pilsner's, um, like in the, in the color, um, and how like the Midwest IPAs have a little bit more of an orange tint to it. There's a, there is like a little bit of underlying malt character, but it's still very bright hops. This is actually more towards that. Um, and it's still fantastic. Like if you told me, Hey, I got this new Fatheads IPA and I didn't see the label or anything, you just poured it to me and you gave me this, I would 100% be like, yeah, that is a great new IPA that they made. Um, I'm still getting that coconut too, which is awesome. Uh, but there is a ton of pineapple. Uh, even though it has a little bit more sweetness and a little bit of that 
the caramely malty backbone. It's still so bright, and it finishes very, very dry, um, like all of their IPAs. It has a nice bitterness, but again, it's definitely not like back of the tongue bitterness, not like a New England IPA. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's not even really as bitter as a traditional West Coast, like Pliny, you know, Green Flash, Alpine type uh, IPA either. This, damn, it, I don't want to say this is the best one that they've done because they, like, Leadfield Snowshoe was really good. Um, there's one or two other ones. The collaboration they did with Resident Culture was great. I, I'm i blanking on what their names are because they've done so many in the, at this point. But this is definitely uh, one of the better ones. But it does it, – so I love those other ones that I said were more like Pilsner malt. Like it was just straight Pilsner. It was so, so light. But those – they, I would say at least in body, like they were a little bit leaning more towards like the hop water character type thing, um, where it was a little boozy and all that. They were still very, very good beers, and I like them because not all their breweries were doing that. But this is is definitely not hop water. It's very balanced um, while being very bright at the same time. The booze is, I would say, I, I don't I don't want to double or triple IPA to be like syrupy, but that's usually like a malt additional sugar type thing. It's usually not an alcohol thing. So this is not like that. This is not syrupy. But you do get the, pre I mean, it's 9.2 ABV. And <clears throat> when most of the flavor is from the hops and not very much from the malt, even though it's more than some of their other stuff, you're going to perceive the alcohol probably more than you would in a stout because in the stout you have like there's still a good bit of hop character in the roasty and chocolatey and all that. There's just a lot of there's a lot more different flavors going on that are going to mask that alcohol versus uh, just a double IPA. So I wouldn't say that the alcohol is like well hidden. Um, I don't think it's excessive either. I think it's appropriate for a you know a nine plus ABV double IPA, um, and I I like that. Like I don't I don't love the taste of alcohol, but I also like something that I appreciate how strong it is, which you know just makes me pull back a little bit more, not drink it quite as fast. Um, but that's not to say the breweries that hide it even better aren't skilled because that's a skill in and of itself. Um, but I kind of like this. I think it's just very appropriate for what it is. Everything's aligned with this. Um, I would absolutely buy this again on my scale of buy, drink, dump. This is for sure a buy. This is a really, really great um, – I don't even want to – I know they say West Coast because everyone's just West versus New England. There really is a middle ground – because this isn't like super grapefruity pithy at all, um, which is more like the West Coast like stone type thing. This really is a lot like a Fathead's beer, which is why I say Midwest. And Surly is another one, which I would call like a Midwest IPA, all of their stuff. Uh, but this is a very, very good version of that, and I am so glad that I can get this locally, you know, without... Because Surly actually did start distributing down here recently, and I I got some of their IPAs when they did, and they're still really great too, but I like that I can just get this quality of beer pretty consistently every couple weeks they come out with something new. So it's definitely, definitely a buy for me. Um, but on that note, I think that's all I got on this one. Please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.